Good afternoon viewers, it's four o'clock on a Friday afternoon. I've got the legendary treasure hound with me. I've just pulled up, Dean's beat me to it. He's got on the field before me today because you've seen how well I did on my own here the other day, looking for deep targets with my Deus One and finding them. So me, Dean and Buster, back on it. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe because uh, I need a bit of traction. Most of you aren't subscribed. So if you're back here for like the third or fourth time, chuck us a sub please and we'll see what we can do. Right, I've done really well in three hours here the other day. I've just switched on. It come up in the configuration screen straight away and I thought it said congratulations. I thought, oh, is this a new secret update? Have I won something? I haven't won something. It come up and I was confused, but I'm gonna try and win something out of this pasture. So yeah, I'm back to sticking on my Deus one because we've been doing well, viewers. We got Dean uh, Hunter Noodle there. You had a few bits and a few coins and that. Yeah, it's still producing. Yeah, we're, to the before you steal them all. we'll get on it, mate. This is my hammy field, not yours. <laughs> uh, I've just had a musket ball viewers at about five or six inches deep. My first target, so that's good. You've got to dig deep, you know. Yeah, we're going yeah, deep. Deep now on the iffiest of signals to get the goods out of this pasture. So still there. He's about seven or eight inches there. He was a rocky one now that he's kid. Give you an update viewers. So this is how iffy we are pushing it. Everything mate. De it's Dean's right. not not everything. If we know for a fact it's absolute iron, oh, yeah, we ain't digging it. That. But that you know that's how much we're pushing the envelope. Dean just dug some iron. I've got uh, a per perfect example of a mega deep target there, viewers. And I'm gonna switch my headphones off so you can hear it on the speaker. There's nothing on the screen. The XY is not moving at all on this one over there. And uh, I'll get my speakers on. I had this target on my headphones, tiny little one direction squeak. Uh, with no action on the screen, with a lot of iron round it, but now I've put my speaker on, it's much harder to find without my headphones. See how the screen's doing absolutely nothing on the XY. That's the sort of signal I'm digging, but I'm going to put my headphones back on now just to pick up oh, I'm on the right one. This has proven super hard target. I've took it down to about eight, nine inches there, pinpointed depth. Uh, before I put my pinpointer in, the machine was now not picking up any signal. That can mean that it's just slipped a little bit deeper, a small target out of the range. Just about occasionally getting it picked up on my pinpointer. Not often, very tricky. Look, see, I've just had it a minute ago. Can't find it again. It's something my new viewers. I'll see if I can get it out for us. So that non-existent, 90% iron, very, very grunt viewers on that hole turned out to be this. Look at the weird shape of it as well. I don't know whether that is just a twisted piece of uh, throwaway wire or it's bronze and it's been a bit older and it's something more significant. But that was like at 9 or 10 inches and uh, it just, you know, just a very obscure signal turned out to be a proper conductor. Dean's Deus is, uh, it's a bit cranky like him. It gets loads of interference off mine, whereas mine's quiet. So that's good, isn't it, viewers? Uh, he's just dug this at seven inches, a little medieval uh, belt stiffener. Oh, Dean's got a target here about seven inches Not or so. a hammy though, mate, look. Yeah, it's, it. oh, it's about pinpoint level though, Lovely mate. Lovely and sound, eh? Yeah, you could hear it, Marla. Could have put another four or five inches on. It's Georgian, any? 
Yeah, early Georgian. Georgian. All the right signs. Let's give it another scan. Unless that's enamel, I might give it a wash and see what's what. Lovely bang, isn't it? Well, this was Dean's uh, probable coin or something. Unless it has had proper enamel on. I don't know what that is, whether I've got it the right, right way round or not. Viewers, I think uh, that is a head facing left there. Yeah. Georgie. I don't know, it's a period. Come and have a look through the screen on this while I'm holding it here. It looks like it's got gold gild on it and traces of blue. There's blue on there. I know, mate. Unless it's a reaction. It could be, but there's a head facing left. Yeah, but he ain't, he ain't got a hair. But if it was a reaction, why has it got gold as well as the blue? That's what I'm, I don't get. And he ain't got hair. And that might be blank. Might have been. He ain't got hair. Might have been some sort of badge that, you know, mate. He ain't got hair either. Yeah, is that better? He ain't got hair! He ain't, he ain't got, got hair! <laughs> Dave, I filled it in a little bit. The sheep pulled one of the plugs out and dug a big hole. You don't have to tell the viewers, mate. Don't yeah. tell the viewers that there was a couple no, of craters. The no, we don't upset the farmer, do we? Uh, no, the sheep have pulled out a few clods and we will do we'll some, some summer early repairs as and when. All right, sweet bunty. Oh, look how cute he is. He just wants to be right by his daddy. This is a bit off the top of the cloud as in I've had to go in sideways. Might prove to be rubbish viewers, but I'll keep you updated just in case it's a fancy pencil or something, metal. No, it's not a silver pencil, it's one of them, it's a blooming blooming. It's not ancient, it's got a seam on it. And I can't even get it out, but I will to chuck it away. You was having a cheeky rock and roll, wasn't you? And I always miss it. I always miss it, don't I, Bump? But look at that view. A little Bumbelina and that view in the background. Shaping up to be a lovely evening. And this uh, silver and the ancient stuff has been as elusive as ever. But you've just got to tell yourself it's here, viewers. You've got to just keep telling yourself that it's here with my little rock and roller look at him. Oh. Oh, honestly, he, he brightens my heart. He is golden. If I don't find, it's always okay because I've got my little soulmate there. Look at him go, rolling like a little sausage roll. I might have to take his coat off if this evening sunshine continues. He can smell fox shit or something there. Well, then he knows I'm filming him now. He's covered in it. Look. Oh! He's sheep poo. He's rolling in sheep poo, Dean. Look at your poo head. You got poo on your head, dried poo. We caught ya. We caught you, Bunty. That's what he was rolling in. Good job it was well dried. Don't be sticking your poo head in my face. You little doggy, you. Well, I'm just on the hedge line and you can't always get under these, depending on the time of the year. And uh, I got a signal. See how big this clod is? That's a big clod. It's soft. And because it's not grass yet, it's a bit messy, but it's huge for a reason. I got a signal and it sounded like it'd be about as big as a small paint can or something. But all I've seen up to now is one copper that's weird unless it's just a big piece of junk and a copper happens to have been in it well that's only a tuppence that's only a tuppence surely that didn't bang in like a paint can oh that was the rest of the signal a big bit of burnt aluminium you're gonna fill that big hole for daddy bunt yeah suppose it's simply no chance. All right, Bunt. Well, this is why I call it my quiet pasture. I got two lovely hammies last time out, but spend hours on this and not find the goods. But uh, till the last signal, always keep going. One never knows whether this video will have a big cherry on the top or it'll just be a catch up with old Anglo and Bunty. Just had a bibbly bobbly signal here. It didn't know what it wanted to be. It decided it was going to be an old five pence, even though it says new pence. 
God save our gracious queen. God bless her. So, uh, I keep saying to Dean, it's his turn now. This is magic field, but this is Anglo-Celtic's magic field. But it's actually more like Dean's front garden. I ain't fucking he's up, he's not very good at detecting. I'm giving, <laughs> giving him all my tips. He ain't found much over the years, you know. He finds a lot on eBay. And, and he used to dig jam jars. I don't buy coins. I he used to dig jam jars oh, and do pot bottles. lids. Yeah, pot lids, yeah. Uh, over at King's Heath. Old bottles galore. Oh, Dino. In the days when I was a back skinhead. Back in King's Heath, he dug jam jars. Oh, Dino. Robbed Ooh. cars to do <laughs> nothing he wouldn't do. <laughs> and he's got something round on an elusive. And he reckons it's got to be a button. Yeah, it's got to be a button, isn't it? Do you know, it's got all the looks of... Uh, a button. <laughs> a button, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Do you know what, Dino? You know what, Dino? It's not even as good as a jam jar, that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> not even as good as a jam Look, the sheep are all, all pissed <laughs> off in disgust, <laughs> mate. <Isn't it? laughs> Please, Mr. Lamb, <laughs> come back here. Dean needs your mojo. They're leaving me, man. They're leaving me. He needs you. Need your mojo, mate. They need my mojo. You let them. You let them my magic field down. No, but it's sunny. It's lovely, mate. And it's nice, isn't it? All the right and what did you just say a minute ago? You got, you got to dig deep, grit your teeth, and just get down there. You said it sounded wrong, didn't it? It sounded it proper sounded gay, wrong. didn't it? It sounded You've like dig everything now sounded because... like something that somebody might say to you on the front entrance of uh, a certain club. We're digging all the Georgian pennies in that. Come inside, Dean, and dig, dig deep. Scratchy signals. Come deep, inside, Dean, and deep, dig, know, dig deep, deep and get down there. <laughs> I don't think I'll bring him on the magic field no more, even if it is outside his house. Well, that'll teach me to... Uh, have a go at Dean for digging buttons, viewers. I've just dug a button on my magic hammy field. But yeah, like I say, I do describe this as my quiet pasture. Well, th this keeps it tre its treasures for certain times, doesn't it, Dean? It does. Certain times of the day, like this is the ha magic hammy hour, but some days it won't allow you to have one. It'll keep it for when it really want needs you when you really need to pick me up. So we'll get more off this field if we don't get them today. Absolutely stunning evening though. Stunning in it, Bunter. Just over there in the distance, in that gap between the trees on the high ground, there is actually a tower, Broadway Tower. My darling late wife Rachel used to work there. I always feel like she's kind of looking down on this field, pointing away sometimes. And whether we find or not, Bunt, well, she's always with us, isn't she? It's a lovely evening to be remembering your lovely mum. Oh, this next find here and on the clod, it's it's not overly valuable, viewers, but it's just near. It's nearly brought a tear to my eye. On my last clip, I looked over to the high ground to where Rachel used to work and I mentioned she's looking down on us. Next good, good signal. Uh, I'll show you, look. Just prove she is looking down on me and Buster. Look at that, my next good signal after mentioning my darling late wife, Rachel. Little heart shape. Uh, would have been uh, nice solid gold looking back in the day. Oh, God bless you, Rachie, Bobby. I know you're still there for me and Bunty and Tilly. Oh. Hey, see, Mummy's looking down, Bunt. You know, don't you? You know, mate, she's always with us. There's a load of mozzies with us as well at the minute. Oh, that's made me feel good, that finding that straight after mentioning lovely Rach. Buster's mummy. Buster was 11 when I met Rach. She found him in Spain. Well, he found her. And uh, now it's me and Bunty, innit? 
and all right still. I was just going to say, viewers, uh, Dean's going in a minute, and we're going to have a live dig on that signal, but just as I click my camera on, he's, he's going, oh, it's coke. And you're going home, and you yeah. expect a phone call off me saying normally, I'm on the Normally, when I go home, within half an hour later, I normally get the famous call off Steve on WhatsApp normally. Dean, just had a hammy up, but this is what I'm wishing for again. Du double bubble yesterday, We're it? digging everything today. We're digging deep on the lot because it's we've got to get back in the hammy territory because we know that they're deep on this land now. They're up to 10 inches, 11 would, inches would you like? Would you like the uh, Worcestershire's... Uh, are we in Worcestershire here? We are still, Yeah, yeah, we? it comes under Worcestershire, yeah. Right, yeah. well, I'll send you the Worcestershire fans liaison's phone number when you get in. For that coke? <laughs> yeah, you can record that, mate. You can keep them off my ass if they're busy with you and all your shite. Just they won't, they won't bother with me and all my this, cool this, shizzle. What? You've got to dig every weird signal now. Just having a bit of fun with signals, haven't we, Steve? Got to dig it all. Dig yeah. it all. Dig it deep, mate. Yeah. Get in that gay bar dig when, it. when you get in. He <laughs> dig lives. It deep. There's a gay bar in this village. The open it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next door. To Is you. that what it's about? In your mm. in your back garden. And 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 he posts he posts these pictures on his Facebook of this really nice back garden. It's his neighbours. He he puts his. Phone That's funny. You must have climbed over and had a, a fish and chips in his garden. Then I've, I've never been in the jacuzzi. <laughs> I've never been in the jacuzzi. Never been in one in my life. Right, it's been great seeing you again, Dean. Oh, it won't be the last son. Fill, fill your all. That's there, good, son. man. Uh, and like I said, I will do my best to give you that I'm phone gonna, call in I'm, 20 minutes. I'm going to give him his lucky half hour because when I always leave him, he always seems to come as alive and he always seems to pull something off nice to end the day. But it is the magic hour with that sun yeah, going so. down. Yeah, ground comes alive, mate. Right, I'll catch up with you soon, Dean. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, and we'll All smash right, it again. Take that coke home, show it to the flow. Stay on it, hunters. Well, Dean's right up there on the top fence, just about to get off, and I thought I might have been able to call him back to see the hammy. But it turned out to be a very, very thin, blank, probably half punch, probably from the 1700s. But yeah, there's still targets here. Oh, beautiful um, evening. I know I keep saying it, but it is. Uh, I had a, a deep sounding iron signal here, but I just put Buster on a promise that cause it's seven o'clock and I'm really hungry, starting to flag. I put Buster on a promise. I said, listen, son, next three signals and we're going. I got one. What was, uh, what was that? That was a tiny little air rifle pellet not getting many signals so I dug a squelchy deep iron one 99% convinced it would be iron and it is iron but I like it and this was deep I know you can pick iron up deep but this is like 15 inches down so that's uh, how deep it is you know there's the pinpointer and I can get my whole fist down on top of that again so that's nine inches the pinpointer yeah, another six inches or so on top of the pinpointer. Look at the shape of it. I know this isn't one of them special Bronze Age ones, but I like that shape. It suggests early to me. Here's an axe. You can see there where the socket is. It suggests quite early, this one, to me. Uh, and hopefully um, somebody will be able to tell me just about what sort of age that is. Uh, that is getting, that's getting taken home with me and I'm going to preserve that like I did with my big iron, massive iron church key. Let me just knock a bit of that dirt off. Well happy with that. Thanks, Bunt. Just knocked a bit of the dirt off work by the hole for the shaft. It's got a very distinctive shape that, isn't it? So... People who do know about these things, they'll be able to tell me within about 50 or 100 years or so. I'm open. It's also on the uh, line, the hammy line that goes right up the field but down the bottom. I'm open that this is uh, medieval. I'd be absolutely buzzing if that's a medieval axe.
on the Anglo Agogo iron chisel. Thank you, sweet brave heart dog, for this beautiful signal letting your daddy hang on. I am looks like a bit of a tang broke off in antiquity. I am absolutely buzzing with that. I'll give you an update. I've just tagged Julian Evan Hart. History coming back to life. There's no way that's only 100 or 2 years old. It just isn't. And it's going to get uh, preserved and uh, stabilised in wax. I'll make a video of it like I did with my key. Anglo. A go go. Blimey hell. Blown away. The third signal of the elusive signals was some coke. We started with iron today. We finished with iron and coke. I've just had an update from a Scandinavian guy on my Facebook. Well, first of all, some other guy showed a picture of an iron axe just like that. And after it had been treated by professionals, because it's an archaeological job, all beautiful Viking carvings along it, beautiful. And then some uh, Scandinavian guys just commented and said, battle axe, six to seventh century. <laughs> I'm shaking. I'm absolutely shaking. I've gone and dug a Viking axe. A little bit better than the phone call to tell them that I've got a hammy in it. Dean, Dean, you went home early, mate. I dug some iron and I've got a Viking axe. Speechless, speechless. Rachel looking down on me again, Just pulling it out of thin air, telling my dog we're going home, digging iron signal, get a Viking axe. I'm absolutely blown away. I'm absolutely blown away, viewers. I said earlier in this video, <coughs> the field gives things when it wants to. I wasn't getting a hammy today. Took a chance on a grunty iron signal and uh, it's been on my Facebook for 20 minutes now and there's a lot of knowledgeable Viking people who are saying that I have just found a 6th, 7th century <coughs> Viking axe and treated properly with electrolysis. It might have all the Viking scroll work on it. I was saying though earlier, you know, the field only gives when it wants to and uh, today's video <coughs> might not have a cherry on the top. <coughs> it's pretty much had one of the biggest cherries, if not the biggest cherry I've ever dug. Oh. It's not all about gold. Oh. How many people dig Viking axes? Not many. Not many at all. <coughs> I am absolutely blown away. Absolutely <coughs> blown away. <coughs> late now though, I better get him home and feed him. Well, it's uh, 8 o'clock now, just got back to the evening by where I live. That stunning Viking uh, axe calls for a chippy tea. Still blown away, it's been just less than an hour since I pulled it out of the ground. I've come home, it's about 10 miles, uh, been to the chip shop. And for every minute that goes by, more and more people are queuing up to say it's Viking. But I've got it on my Facebook, I've got to take some of these people serious because some of them live in Scandinavian countries and some of them, um, friends on my Facebook, have dug Viking hordes and stuff in their own country. And they're saying that this is Viking. And I I'm doing well just to get these words out. I'm blown away. I'm speechless. I've dug a Viking axe. It's a bit bigger than a bucket lister. You know, bucket lister for me is um, a stator which I've not had. That kind of chops the bucket up and throws it away. Viking axe. Two, two fish under there. All right, Bond. He's waiting for some. Take my axe to it. Where's the tillbot? Where is she? She wants some. Uh, I'll find her in a minute. Look, she's here skulking. She'll be on that fish as soon as I put it on that table. A pair of them, look, they're just hanging for it. Well, what a day, viewers. It's uh, 9.30 now. 
and uh, the bumblebees there uh, i haven't even took his coat off yet uh, we've had our fish and chips we've had a right belly full a proper viking supper the axe has done the rounds uh on facebook uh it's obviously had a few smart comments but you always got smart alex uh when they can show me their viking axes i'll uh give them the thumbs up too um now a lot of the scandinavians and people uh have said um around about 900 ad to around about 1100 ad another expert said they sometimes carried on slightly into the medieval period. Worst case scenario, it's um, some medieval geezer who copied a Viking design. But, um, you know, it's on that line down the field. That, that line started at the very top end of the field uh, with um, a silver early Roman denarii from about 100 BC. And on that same line, we've had uh, a groat. We've had a short cross hammered. We've had a Tudor coin spill of Mary and Elizabeth. And right at the bottom of it now, we've had this ancient axe. So there's history there in that field. And on the other side of the road at the top of the field, where the top bit's the best, there's a field opposite and the farmer doesn't want to know. But yeah, we shall try and get that field and carry on the axe way i'm going to call it from now on we'll try and get that into his field that path and that's another adventure thanks viewers uh don't forget to please like comment and definitely subscribe if you haven't please because otherwise uh you know i just i don't get much traction so if you like it join in in it thank you very much